both of these motors will do the job, but which one is better? This is a hybrid stepper motor. So a stepper motor with some brains attached to it. And this is just your regular off the shelf stepper motor. I don't know about the size, but actually the size is a little bit deceiving because the bottom of this motor doesn't actually do anything. Because this is a hybrid stepper motor, otherwise known as a servo. Both of these are NEMA 23 sized stepper motors. The torque rating for this, no joke, a 103 Newton centimeter, not a meter. <laughs> um, so that probably creates like 0.1 Newtons at a meter. Not bad for a stepper motor. And this guy is a 2.2 Newton meter. Both of these motors work and will get you from point A to point B. Here's the reason I'm going with the hybrid stepper motor. It gives you feedback based on the motor's performance. And the controller can handle the voltage to adjust for incoming workloads that are greater than what's currently being provided to the motor. In plain English, when the motor's struggling, it gives it more power. Versus a regular stepper motor where it's stuck at whatever power level you set it. So you want to set it high enough to do all the jobs without it stalling. That's how you normally set up a stepper motor but not too high that it overheats the motor. So the more power, the more heat. Now this will throttle the power levels, but depending on the work being used. So how does it know to do that? It uses this little guy on the back. Uh, it's an encoder disc that rotates in there with the motor shaft. A couple sensors read the position of the motor and feed that back to the control board. The control board knows where the position of the motor should be and this tells the control board how close the motor is to where it should be. And then it does its own corrections in real time. If you've never heard of these type of motors, um, there might be a reason why for that. They're more complicated. So normal process, control board, motor. The, the serv hybrid servo motor process is control board, another control board, motor. Oh, and did I miss the, the extra power supply just for the motor? These are sometimes called a closed loop stepper motor. Meaning by closed loop is the information comes in, it does its thing, comes back out, so the board knows it's counting the steps as it's making the steps. Uh, this is an open loop type stepper motor, meaning it just gets the controls sent to it and then there's no feedback whatsoever. That all adds up. I've been a part of the 3D printing scene for a little while, and for what I've noticed, it's sort of a hobby level for most people, and they don't want to spend the bigger bucks on the better equipment. So most 3D printers are the bare minimum as far as specs goes to get you the 3D positioning that you need. So which is the best stepper motor here? This one, obviously for everything except for your budget. And if you're on a budget, just go with a regular stepper motor, call it a day. I gotta make motor mounts to mount these bad boys to the large actuators.
chicken pho and an order of the yeah, salt and pepper wings. Yeah, I need video editing if you will. Thanks for following the build so far, guys. Uh, this is what I've got done. So three five foot long actuators and the and the print head actuator. So this is a planetary gear reduction. I believe a 10 to one. So that should give me very precise movements here. A couple of microns per step. That's what I'm hoping here. The actuators here um, took a while. Uh, this is the one I've been showing in the videos, but I just finished these two. And they're basically identical. So for this one I cheated on, instead of using a graduated drill, I just angled, I just used an angle grinder and chopped out the uh, slot for it. Other than that, it's virtually, virtually identical um, to all the other ones. And they are all, wow, that's very long. Okay, now I'm over to the other side. Um, they're all done, ready to go. They all are nice and solid. Missing one thing, and that is a motor. So I've made the little motor mounting plates that connect to the bottom. Took some measurements and cut it out with an angle grinder, and these three plates are identical. So I should talk about price, um, what I paid for all of this stuff, and well, what you could expect to pay if you try something like this yourself. Uh, the end blocks, both on this side and the other side, the ball screw nut and the ball screw itself. Here in the States, I got them shipped to my house for 120 each. So they're, they go for about 120 to 140 for sets like that each on eBay. The extruded aluminum was about $47 for each one. Um, each actuator plate ran me about 65 after tax. So this whole setup here, lead screw, gantry plate, uh, attachment um, nut underneath there, uh, end plates and washers all cost about 90 bucks to get this size here. So let's talk about speed over accuracy or accuracy over speed and the way I want to think about it. These um, are not fast. They're not meant to be fast. They're meant to be super, super accurate. They have anti-backlash ball nuts, which means they're preloaded inside of there. The preload means it's pushing on both directions of this ball screw at the same time so it does not move back and forth. So that's called a preload. So that, that eliminates backlash out of the moving of the gantry plate back and forth. The travel speed is about uh, 1500 millimeters per minute. And I don't know what that is in for inches per minute. I don't have that calculation in my head. So um, that's, not a, that's not snappy, no. It's not meant to be snappy. Uh, it's not meant to jump back and forth real quick. Um, it's gonna take a little bit longer to make prints with this, but I'll, I'll be saving myself to not have to split this print up into 10 different prints. I can print the entire thing in one go. And you can also get precision ground ball screws. These are not, these are just straight off the boat ball screws. Um, but still, they're, as far as I can tell, they're pretty solid. Uh, they are extra long, so I will be having to run these slower than a normal actuator speed because I'll get screw whip. Yes, that's a term, screw whip, okay? Um, and that means if it's spinning super, super fast, it's gonna be off balance slightly, and whatever way it's off balance, it's gonna start to wobble, and that's called screw whip. So if you can't run them too fast or you'll start to get that sort of play in the actuator and when it's moving up and down that means your um, your gantry plate will slightly move back and forth because it'll be a shorter distance between the endpoints as it goes up in its arc very minute tiny little but that will wreck any surface finish you're trying to go for um, if you're doing milling and 3d printing those are some pretty tight tolerances, so it'll put the line in the wrong place. Okay. All right, now it's time to go pick up my chicken butt.